Hey CFS Warriors, it's Victoria coming to you from the beach and I've always wanted to do a holiday tips video and I think it's because the holidays can be such a challenging time when you've got CFS and all the expectations that we might have been able to skirt around during the year all of a sudden come at us like a freight train. And so I just wanted to share things that have helped me on my journey in getting through the holidays, enjoying the holidays, because you deserve to enjoy your holidays. So the first thing is focus on the essentials and eliminate the rest. You know, it's good to remember that all Christmases are not gonna be this way, but for now, you need to just focus on what's most important to you. So what I like to do is sit down and kind of jot down a few ideas about what really means the most to me during the holidays, and then to focus on those things. And when other things come my way, I've kind of already sifted them out in my head, and I know that's a no, and this is a yes. The second thing that's really helped me is creating a baseline calendar. And so what that means is I'll have a little sheet of paper that I can look at that's a week in advance and it'll show me in big blocks and I'm going to hopefully post that picture here. And it just helps me give a, at a glance what activities I've got going on. So before the week begins, I can kind of set in the days that I want to be more down days and days that I can actually get out of the house and how many activities I'm gonna do. Now, of course, this is all gonna depend on where you are in recovery if you're even able to get out of the house. But if you are at that stage where you're getting out, it's really helpful to write those activities in because it's amazing how quickly we forget what we have going on. And also, if you're bed bound, it's still a good idea to use because you can look at if you're engaging with someone socially or if you've got something else that you wanna do during the day, just put those on the calendar and so that way you can work your energy expenses around them in a real strategic way. So the third thing that's really helped me is advocating for myself and setting limits. So, you know, it's really tough when you get an invitation to go somewhere and people don't know that you're struggling or either they're tired of hearing about it. It can be a challenging time. So I found that the best way is, first of all, I use my husband a lot. So if you've got someone who will advocate for you, that really helps. But otherwise, you come back to, you know what? Um, I'm been, I am in recovery from a neurological illness that's invisible, but I have to really monitor my activities. Just putting it in a little, you know, brief sentence that people can manage helps them. And so that way you can ask, would it be okay if I just show up a little bit late and stay for an hour? And I'll stay longer if I can, because I really want to be there. So um, if that's, you know, I just found those are good ways to handle social invitations. And I've also had, a, when I've been at an uh, event like that, you know, sometimes you get going and you don't want to leave because you are dressed, you are out of the house, and you are ready to party and to be with everybody. And so what I did last year is my mom was sure to hold me accountable and say, okay, she would check in with me after an hour and say, do you need to leave now? And you know, sometimes it's worth it pushing those boundaries, but if you wanna make it through the whole holidays in really good shape, sometimes it's better to say, you know what, I'll stay for an hour or two hours and then I'm gonna go home. Another thing that's really helped is realizing this is not forever. Every Christmas, I've been able to do more and more. And so just realize that as you set boundaries now, it's really just so that in the future, you'll have even better Christmases or more active Christmases. But there's no reason why this Christmas, you can't just snuggle in, enjoy the things that mean a lot to you. So another thing that helped me was having something to do when I did get home, because often I had to leave a family gathering and so my husband and kids were still there. So when I went home, I made sure that I had a fun movie to watch and if I didn't have a nice dinner prepared at home, I would order one in because I felt they're celebrating and I need to make sure that I don't feel really left out during the holidays. So I think it's just an act of self-compassion to look after yourself and plan for those times when you're gonna be at home, resting, recovering, so that you don't get feeling like you're out on your own too much. So, you know, the final thing is do the cream. Figure out again what it is that means the most to you during the holidays. Like I asked my son the other day, so what traditions or what things are most do you most want to do? And he said, I want to do the gingerbread cookies because when they were younger, we used to bake those and cut them and ice them. You know, that's an easy thing that we can just do that doesn't require a lot of 
going out and doing things. I'll just do that for myself as well and figure out what are those things that mean the most to me that I want to do for the holiday season. So that way you make sure you do the cream and you don't get, you know, off doing what everyone else wants you to do and you don't get to enjoy those moments because you've been through a really hard time if you've got CFS and you want to make sure that these holidays are special for you as well. So anyway, with that, sending uh, holiday love and remember life is not over, it's starting again.